I want to list a few sins that I would not expect a single MRA to make a single one of these sins. Disrespecting male safe spaces. Again, I have respect for the fact that heterosexual males in our society are being discriminated against, and for this, they develop, they, they block people on Twitter, they develop private spaces where they feel correct. You should not be disrespecting these safe spaces. Misrepresent court findings. Again, one of the, one of the tools of the homonormative matriarchy is the misrepresentation of court findings. Never do that if you're an MRA. The famous French philosopher Jean-Paul Sartre is famous for proclaiming existence before essence. That's right, dude. Have you heard this shit? Existence before essence. And today I will ponder, or we will ponder if you motherfucker actually finish this video, we will ponder a different question or a similar question. All right, dude, check this out. What makes a pedophile? What is the nature of pedophilia? What is the existence? What is the state of being of, of a pedophile heart? All right. Is it an attraction to the child's body or the child's mind? Okay. Now, if, um, if a pedophile uh, stole a nine-year-old girl and suddenly she started nagging him about taking out the garbage and doing taxes, would he enjoy his perverted pleasures with her as much as if she had a mind of um, an actual child? But what if the reverse is true? What if somebody with a mature body has been ruled by the court of law to have a mind of a 10 to 11 year old girl, okay? Would a person, a 30 year old man who pursued such a relationship, would he be a pedophile? Is this the essence of pedophilia to own not just the youthful body, but primarily the youthful mind, all right? Okay, man. So, Ivan, what the fuck is wrong with you? What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> My dude, this YouTube culture that I've kind of lived on the periphery of, that I leaped into, it's a fucking gutter. And it makes you ask these kinds of questions. It makes you launch these types of uh, philosophical inquiries, dude. Yeah, <laughs> dude, let's leap into this garbage can, dude. There is somebody else, another Frenchman, this time a French-Canadian, and his name is Jean-François Jean Guerripi, all right? Jean-Francois Guerripi, all right, man? Maybe that's not how it's pronounced, but motherfucker, at least I make an effort. A lot of assholes who know this guy on YouTube just refer to him as JF, but that's dehumanizing. When I see JF, I see the full being. I see Jean-Francois Guerripi, all right? That's who I see. And it's in order of him that I'm wearing this... Um, shitty blazer I bought at Target for ten dollars. <laughs> it's an order of him and his fashion styles of um, looking like he fucking stole a, 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 f a fucking suit from a dying man or at least snatched it, from, snatched it from goodwill. It's an order of him that I have decided to go with this fashion. So let's hear his story. Let's hear his story of humble love that breaks through the barriers, perhaps, that it shouldn't frankly break through, and where it's not love, but who the fuck knows what broke through it. You fucking shouldn't date fucking severely autistic children, dude, and steal them from their parents. That's the point. Let's go. <laughs> year or two ago, maybe, yeah, two years ago, I fell in love with a woman who was mentally retarded. Uh, she had autism, and... Uh, her father disagreed with her choice to live with me, to, to get to, to become my fiance and to have a baby with me. I think that what JF has done is incredibly disgusting and insanely irresponsible. I don't, care, I don't care about your moral offense, you piece of shit. Sure, you don't have to care about my moral offense because the court already agreed with me about the moral offense. That this girl did not no. have the... 
two independent, two independent psychiatrists evaluated this girl. The first said that she had the social and mental skills of a 10 to 11 year old child. And the second one said that she wasn't fit to make the decision to, to leave and live with you and have a child, which is obviously evidenced by the fact that she had no income. She didn't know if you had income. She had never lived on her own before. And despite all of this, you convinced her to leave her family without a, without a word to join you and make a baby. Destiny, may yeah. I just That's throw. called love, you idiot. That's yeah. called love? But a 19-year-old yeah. girl? Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. a 19-year-old yeah. girl I can I... love, you idiot. Hey, right. I, I don't you know why go... you're lecturing. Are... Hang on, hang on, hang on. Do, hang on, hang you, on, want, do on. you want people in the future to be scared of going out with mentally disabled people? To be scared that eventually destiny will find out and it will ruin their life. So, may, no, okay, wait, go ahead, Jeff. Uh, one second, because... Uh, uh, this is something that someone, uh, I will read the, uh, all the other super chats, but someone just donated uh, five bucks, thick fingers, five bucks. Thanks, buddy. Now, ladies, I hope you don't take offense when I offer a bit of constructive criticism to you. Throw a bit of um, shade your way, all right? Third wave feminism prevents you from seeing drooling men who are heavily autistic and have an emotional development of a nine-year-old boy as suitable, as suitable partners for life. You go ahead with this fucking not shaving your legs and oh I fucking gonna drive my own car and I can leave uh, the house without your permission type of uh, uh, activities type of behaviors but deep inside your your heart you want that alpha presence you want that alpha male and romance is dead in you it's dead you can't see past the saliva dripping on uh, the table as he's talking about um, the specific uh, flight directions of uh, the Star Trek Enterprise <laughs> you're dead inside ladies you're fucking dead inside but real short bus Romeos like Grippy and myself, we fucking, you know, our, our fucking members, our fucking Quebecois uh, iron rods, they rise in proportion to the autistic spectrum. <laughs> they kind of, they leap into action when we see that um, a vulnerability of spirit, a delicious... Uh, potential feast of romance, a virginal flesh that everybody else ignores. That's what we leap into. <laughs> this is what we like, all right? This is what we like. This is alien to you and your judgments and your, and your fucking shitty nature, ladies. Uh, but um, this is not alien to me. Just the other day, my girl and I, we were um, playing with uh, Dora the Explorer toys. And I um, looked into her eyes and I lit a few candles and uh, I said, hey, I said, hey, I'm ready to explore you. And um, she wasn't sure what I was talking about. I said, and I said, baby, baby, I know you saw much of the world through the window of a short bus, but I have to tell you one thing. Even you have to realize that a man has needs. A man has needs. I was like, hey, and after we're done, we're gonna have ice cream and watch Frozen together. <laughs> <laughs> I could kiss you. If a Chad male as happens to have enough success on the sexual market to be going out with a young female, this should be respected. Do not disempower the Chad male. Now, my friends, I hope you don't mind if I read uh, a part of an abstract to a um, scientific article uh, published in the Annals of the New York Academy of Sciences, okay? Just, I'll just read a part of this abstract and then we'll move on. I have to get this out of my system, my dudes. So, the name of the article was um, The Neuroethology of Friendship the neuroethology of friendship. I think that's how it's pronounced. And um, it says uh, here, friendship pervades the human social landscape. Okay? These bonds are so important that disrupting them leads to health problems and difficulties forming, I'm sorry, and difficulties forming or maintaining friendships attends neuropsychiatric disorders like autism and depression. 
So, you know, autists um, and people with depression have a difficulty forming bonds and, um, you know, uh, reinforcing their mental health. I mean, it's a real tragedy. It's a real tragedy. What, and this is a fascinating topic. Unfortunately, I don't have the appropriate education or the background knowledge to fully grasp it. So let's um, see here at the list of the authors. So we have uh, Lauren J. N. Brent uh, from the University of Exeter. Um, I think that's it. Yeah. We have uh, Steve Chang from Yale University. Uh, we have uh, Michael Platt from Duke University. And look, there's another researcher here, a co-author from Duke University, and his name is Jean-Francois Guerippy. So my friends, remember uh, how your grandma told you don't judge a book by its rapey cover? Remember that? And so um, our boy JF has a PhD in neuroscience, all right, from the University of Montreal. I can't pronounce that with a, my bullshit French accent or whatever, but yeah, he has a degree from the University of, a PhD from the University of Montreal. And then he became a postgraduate research assistant, I guess they're called, at Duke University. Now this is fucking, Duke University isn't just some fucking junior college or some third-rate um, state university. This fucking, this fucking school is top tier, motherfucker. It's one of the routinely ranked as being one of the top schools in the world. Top schools in the world. Now, it happens to be that I'm a bit of an elitist. Now, recently I was looking at another abstract for a scientific journal, this one dealing with um, uh, with physics and um, you know my dad sent me a um, uh, an abstract um, an article of his that he wants to publish there and um, you know it happens to be that my dad isn't a real physicist he's a theoretical physicist <laughs> and uh, the thing about correcting it for one thing you know how I speak this fucking language I can barely manage it and maybe I wasn't the best person to review it and I mean he has friends who actually um, you know our editors at um, these journals but uh, whatever he decided to throw his son this task and uh, as I was looking at it like I found some issues with the commas and awkward wording but but the thought occurred to me that it's very strange to edit an article that you don't understand in other words I can see the structure and whatever but I just don't understand I have no way of knowing what this is about and I thought in a hundred mile radius around myself how many people would be able to grasp this article and um, okay well, yeah I mean there's a university here I'm sure there are smart people but would they be I mean I, I don't know if they would crack one percent or certainly wouldn't crack three percent and so I'm an elitist you know I like smart people even when well I, I don't necessarily like them but I give them props I give them respect um, like Richard Nixon you know he was a piece of shit but he was um, an exceptionally bright man like if you ever listen to any of his interviews I mean he speaks in a way that some people can't fucking write essays the way that motherfucker speaks he's just a bright guy you know, he's just a bright guy. And uh, the same goes for, like, uh, Vladimir Putin. He's not, like, super bright, but he's a sneaky kind of autocrat. Like, if you had to live under an autocrat, would you want to live under, like, a clown like Hugo Chavez or Saddam Hussein? You'd want somebody like a top-tier, kind of cl clever, sneaky autocrat like Putin. So it's, like, it, it's hard for me to hate people like that. And it's just, in the path of life of uh, JF, it's very bizarre. It's just a bizarre path of life he chosen for himself. It's just a kind of a strange thing to be, um, you know, a neuroscientist at a very prestigious university. And then suddenly, just a few years later, hosting a fucking live stream, being a co-host uh, to um, Andy Worski. It's like from fucking Duke University to fucking Andy Worski Live. It's just fucking weird that he decided to morph uh, or rolled into this uh, kind of a... MRA type fucking ethno state. It's just this kind of YouTube um, fucking cliches from the gutter, let alone uh, this thing we're gonna about to discuss. But before we leap into it, I just want to look at the man like 
he's a fascinating guy, not in the sense of ever wanting to interact with him, but um, it's like, you know, like dissecting a, a frog. Like, you don't want a frog as a pet, I guess, but you uh, like to see what's going on inside. So let's um, spend a few precious moments of our lives <laughs> discussing this. Let me tell you about the first thing that really, um, really uh, focused my attention about JF. Um, so there are two types of accents. There is, of course, like, I don't know what the formal uh, terms for this is, but there are native accents like, you know, the Bronx accent, the fucking Southern accent, the English accent, the Scottish accent, you know, we fucking know what those are. And uh, then there are the second type of accents, and these are the ones like myself and JF, we have those. And those accents come from the fact that our brain was designed and structured itself around uh, one language, and then we spend much of our time speaking another language, or some of our time. Well, anyway, you know, so in my case it's Russian, it's almost like, um, you know, you have a uh, one operating system, and then you insult, install somehow force a software from another operating uh, system on top of it, like a suite of software. Now I know you fucking nerd, you're sitting there and saying that's not possible. Why don't you fucking shut your trap? I don't fucking give a shit, you fucking autistic fucker. Why don't you careful, you know, don't betray your autism or, you know, Gripi is gonna come and fuck you in the ass and steal you from your parents, all right? Just fucking sit quiet there. You know what I meant with this metaphor. Motherfucker, just relax, all right? Fucking relax. So in that friction, uh, that friction between um, this uh, one operating system based around Russian, in my case, and English, creates this uh, distortion in speech. This um, uh, and so, like, I'm not super self-conscious about it, like I used to be. Sometimes, like, I worked at a call center here in Ohio, and this girl was like, "Does your mother have um, a strong accent like you do, or whatever?" And I said, um, "I don't have a strong accent." And she's like, "You kind of do." It's like, "Bitch, you are an uncivilized." animal like most people in Ohio that's what you are you don't know anything about foreigners or cosmopolitan life you know fucking talk to the fucking racist uh, guy Eugene you know who taught me to drive uh, he uh, my driving instructor he was um, you fucking you realize what a fucking strong accent is all right I'm just kidding most people in Ohio aren't animals I just you know it's just it's just the guys you know I don't feel alienated from them at all <laughs> anyway how did we get here well well, anyway, so that's what it is, like the accent. Like when I speak, I actually don't hear it. And it's kind of strange when you spend most of your life, um, well, at this point in my life, speaking English, and then it comes out with a distortion. It's just a weird thing. But you think, you know, the, the thing about me, though, is that I was born in Russia, and I moved here. I all fucking always forget when my mother brought me over here. It's like 12 or 13 or something. And so you'd expect, realistically, me to have some sort of an accent. On the other hand, with JF, when I first heard of him, when I first heard of him, I really didn't, really didn't know this whole thing with the um, autistic girl. I had nothing, no interest interest in him whatsoever, but nevertheless I immediately assumed that he was actually from France. That he was actually from France because of his strong accent. And isn't it that fucking weird when I dis you know, when I realized that he was actually French Canadian, that he was born in a majority Anglo, you know, English speaking country. It's just fucking weird. It's just a little bit weird. And I, and I don't know, ladies, um, whose accent you found more sexy. Don't be afraid to hurt my feelings. I'm not uh, an MRA, you know, <laughs> who sees um, every criticism from a lady as an act of oppression. It's fine if you like his uh, fucking French language. It's fine. Maybe, you know, he's been accused of uh, assault of women 11 times. You know, go, go ahead. Maybe you're a russophobe. You're afraid I'm going to stab you with a you know, with a vodka bottle, go ahead and get raped by a grippy if you if it so desires, if you if you find it sexy. But uh, anyway, it's just fucking weird, right? It's just fucking weird that it sounds like, aside from the relative sexiness of our stupid accents, it just sounds kind of strange that you know my pronunciation is more correct than his. I was fucking born in Russia. You know what I mean? And I know motherfuckers speak French in Quebec with their dialect. Fucking good for them. 
good for them. But aren't they like 10 to, I think they're like 13% of the population. I'm kind of acting nonchalant as if I didn't just look it up on Wikipedia. <laughs> that it's like just some random knowledge I have about the French speakers in Canada. It's just fucking weird that he has a strong accent. So I don't know, my Canadian friends, I don't know if I'm lucky enough to have French Canadians in my audience, but I know I have fucking regular boring English speaking Canadians. Is this normal that your countrymen sound like they're from a fucking foreign country? I mean, this is, could be viewed as a, as a big achievement uh, for Quebec that they were able to create such a French fucking fortress around their, um, around their province that the people there like fucking sound worse uh, speaking English than fucking actual Frenchmen who come here. You know, like a, literally like a French graduate student coming here at the age of 18, well, not 18, I'm sorry, he wouldn't be a graduate student then, but whatever, like you'd expect him to sound like him, like JF. So is this normal? My Canadian friends, please answer me. Don't make, don't make it awkward for me to look in the comments and fucking find nothing. Is this normal to have um, French Canadians with such a strong accent? It's just fucking weird. I'm sorry, maybe this is a waste of the time you want to get uh, going with the, with the girl. But I'm sorry, I just had to, I have to, had to get it out of, out of my system because I think about these accents all the fucking time. So the um, publication, The Daily Beast, has somehow, I don't know how people actually connect with this Hades of YouTube uh, where uh, I dwell, on the very periphery of it, but how they connect it to this fucking underground gutter. Uh, but uh, somehow they've discovered uh, Gerepi. Maybe it's because he's a former graduate student. Maybe it's because of this weird fucking um, love affair with a severely autistic teenager. But in any case, they wrote an article about it. I'm, of course, not gonna read the whole thing, even though it's packed with just some of the most bizarre shit I've ever, I've ever encountered. But I will uh, definitely review parts of it right now. But I just want to say before we leap into this, that uh, JF has um, offered his um, constructive criticism of this article. He has offered his own side. You know, we really shouldn't believe it. Because in this very article, he says that the accusations, the various accusations of accusing women are coming from leftist kind of feminist forces conspiring against him. Basically. I mean, he doesn't say conspiring, but the implication is there. It's just these kind of leftist uh, women. Part of the problem is that he revealed himself as a Trump supporter, and then they went after him. But I mean, he literally says this shit. Um, you know, motherfucker, you're fucking, you're fucking Canadian. Anyway, well, I guess uh, the ladies in his life were obsessed, so they just made up accusations about him of emotional and physical abuse. Uh, that's one level of it. But when once the article was published and it put, didn't put JF in the most favorable light, motherfucker, he kind of cracked that nut. You know, he could put those triple parentheses where they belong and accused it, blamed it on the Jews, a Jewish publication. So it's the Jews, it's the feminists, everybody is uh, after this uh, former neuroscientist who's now uh, fucking making uh, YouTube videos that around 10,000 to 30,000 people watch. So um, everybody's fucking after him, uh, but nevertheless I feel compelled to review this stuff uh, in brief. Now, a lot of ladies um, in America love guys, white guys with accents, because you kind of want something exotic in your life. But, um, you know, it's just let's not cross racial barriers, even if you are not ideologically racist or anything. You know, it's just you want something exotic but familiar. And so, like, a white guy with an accent becomes very appealing. Where, like a Russian is like a second-rate uh, white person, whereas, um, a fr you know, like a Frenchman, even a Canadian one, is uh, more appealing. And the thing of uh, Garipi, uh, he, uh, not a bad-looking guy until you realize that he's an insane psychopath. <laughs> until you connect with that, his dark self, his union dark self that really wants to dominate some autistic teenagers, he seems like a nice guy. And so it looks like he had um, good luck with the ladies when he came over here stateside uh, in order to be a researcher at Duke. Now, uh, he acquired a wife and actually um, uh, she was pregnant with his child. Now, at this point, he... Um, quit uh, Duke University in a flourish. This was his uh, beginning stages of his shit 
internet celebrity. It culminated in him making no effort whatsoever to make his videos, just fucking sitting, you know, by the computer and um, reviewing YouTube videos um, and participating in streams where for some reason assholes like give people money for doing nothing, just fucking talking into their shitty microphones. But uh, anyway, so this, this was all in the future, but the way he initiated this uh, trip to the heights of YouTube celebrity is um, by writing some sort of a Facebook post denouncing the academia and quitting with with a flourish. Now this Facebook post I guess went viral and um, that's how he started. However, during this time his um, uh, pregnant wife received notification from uh, one of his uh, co-workers or colleagues at Duke saying that the reason he was uh, he quit or was fired from Duke had uh, nothing to do with this fucking letter in fact he just came up with it afterwards but in fact um, it originated in the fact that he was uh, having an affair with one of his lab assistants now this lab assistants later claimed that he was emotionally abusive okay and uh, so this uh, caused started to cause issues with his wife now Gary P I don't know if this dream originated when he was still in academia or later but he had a kind of an American dream a kind of an MRA uh, humble dream he wanted to uh, be a stay-at-home dad you know and I guess be supported by his wife well he's taking care of the child and in fact he told the ladies or at least his wife he said this is not a joke. He said, I took care of lab monkeys, so I know what I'll be doing. And that's kind of a strange thing to say. Almost like he's insane. <laughs> well, fucking, I'm not a neuroscientist. He is, so maybe, oh, well, he doesn't have insight. So we're, it's a catch-22. But a lot of people would consider the statement to be eccentric to be the least. Gary P also had a, a preoccupation with children. Like, he really wanted to have a child. Now, a cynical mind could say... Uh, uh, that he just wanted it to have an anchor in America and to receive uh, residency with his uh, wife. But um, uh, whatever, you know, well, actually he said it himself, not just a cynical mind, but he told his wife that. And so once she initiated divorce proceedings, you know, he really kind of uh, leapt into action. And the things he started doing were utterly fucking insane. So, for example, he called the police department and asked them to remove um, weapons from her house. I don't know what weapons she had, but she really was justified to fucking have any kind of a weapon there. So now, strangely enough, you know, the police didn't remove uh, weapons uh, from her house. In fact, they found him to be a fucking weirdo. And her, she, they warned her about it. He started claiming that he's gonna steal their future child and um, take him over to Canada. So that was one of, one of the things he did. At one point during their divorce proceedings, during their custody battle or whatever, you know, he, you know her lawyer re, you know, received a call from an unusual place. <laughs> did it was the Dr. Phil show. <laughs> it was, uh, you know, uh, it, apparently Garipi like, um, called Dr. Phil you know, because he wanted to go to go on the show and sort out their issues there. He wanted to sort of tell the story of how he was being persecuted by family court or whatever. <laughs> he would have a nice ear and Dr. Phil, I mean, both both of them are doctors. Both of them have <laughs> doctorates, so <laughs> they would, you know, maybe they would bond over that. Now, JF didn't have an opportunity, didn't get an opportunity to speak with Dr. Phil. In fact, his wife, um, you know, had to give birth in hiding. She had to, it's just a nor, it's just Keripi, you know, it's just, you, you just kind of, you know, just go in hiding and uh, go anonymously to a hospital to, uh, uh, to uh, give birth. It's just Keripi, it's just, you know, how he rolls, uh, how he rolls with the ladies. But even though he didn't, wasn't able to speak with Dr. Phil, he spoke with other court appointed psychologists that were evaluating him now uh, one of them concluded that he suffers from psychosis <laughs> it's kind of why would he come from to this conclusion but um, you know if I was speaking with um, a court appointed psychologist I would try to be as normal as possible or pretend to be you know as, as uh, to the extent that I could and I would say stuff like um, 
Uh, my name is, uh, hey, this is, uh, my name is Ivan uh, Never Killed the Little Whore Johnson. Okay, that's kind of the kind of thing I would say. I mean, Johnson isn't my real name, but everything else is realistic to what I would do. Uh, but uh, Gerepi really decided to open his heart up to these court-appointed psychologists, to really tell them their life story. And unfortunately, this is like the most fascinating uh, uh, part of this uh, article to me because it's just so strange. It's almost like has an insane kind of innocence to it. It says here, um, uh, he told the psychologist, you know, that he grew, grew up in suburban uh, Montreal and he literally said it was like a paradise. And he said he spent his childhood surrounded by relatives in a village. I mean, maybe in this fucking village, you know, he just was too stupid to fucking learn English or at least to... Um, carried away by the paradise and uh, he says here I didn't know this harmony until I met other women at 18 to 19 years old so this is very kind of a, a strange a strange statement for a 32 year old normal man to make you didn't know this harmony until you met the ladies it's just so kind of um about kind of uh, so sort of um, cartoonish in a sense that a lot of guys they go out into the dating world at least some of them you know and uh, they acquire some bitterness or they acquire disappointment and rejection like you're confronted but most of the time you kind of get over it or uh, I don't know I mean you become a, like a fuck like me or something but uh, I don't know it's just I also kind of don't care about it even with all things considered but there's also like a kind of an innocent kind of a crashing a dashing of an illusions it's like the fucking women are the snake but you have to have them you have to have them at any cost and yet they're um, the, they're, they're kind of at the origin of evil I mean it's just so simplistic and black and white it's uh, kind of insane he said um, he was married at 18 divorced, divorced at 23 and he says um, I wanted a family and she wasn't into it um, she left uh, she lost interest in me and I didn't know how to satisfy a woman and I was getting fat <laughs> again just very strange statements you know like why would a uh, I, I, I don't know, like, why, why do you open up to the state psychiatrist, the psychologist? Like, it's just, um, it's just, it's almost autistic in its nature, and I'm not being sarcastic, but it's like these kind of disappointments and hurts as a teenage uh, prospective lover, and um, uh, just a kind of a, an interesting part of Gerepi. I would like to read more, but unfortunately, um, everything else from here goes really down, down, down there, down into, into darkness, into darkness from there. For some reason, and I don't even know why, Jeff started tweeting stuff that to me was not fun anymore about my past love relationships and about, uh, about anything he could find to smear me based on that story that I told him that I had. I told him about on the drunken peasant. And from that, I considered that Jeff was engaging in, in Twitter abuse and I've blocked him. That's pretty much my story. Uh, Jeff, I'm paraphrasing because the tweet's deleted. But you said essentially, uh, JF is the guy that had to have the state intervene because he was too busy fucking retards. What the Ooh. fuck is that about? Mm -hmm. So are you asking Jeff or me? I'm asking you because I, I don't know any of this backstory and I'd, I want to get your like, take on what the fuck is, what, okay. what's being put out there. Oh, so, uh, when, I, when maybe a year or two ago, maybe yeah, two years ago, I fell in love with a woman who was mentally retarded. Uh, she had autism and uh, her father disagreed with her choice to live with me, to, to get to, to become my fiance and to have a baby with me. So we lived together a few months. And since her father was disagreeing with our relationship, he intervened by going to what we call in the United States a ex parte probate hearing, which is a judi judiciary hearing in which you are found to be mentally incapable of making decisions as an adult in your absence. So the person who revealed these documents is uh, core documents is um, Destiny. He is a Twitch um, game player and also has a cerebral side, you know, and he kind of uh, streams about politics and shit and gets involved in this drama. And so, you know, uh, JF had an interesting response to this. He had an interesting response to it. 
destiny he proclaimed to be a Jew. I guess he, I, I don't know if he had secret recording of destiny's bar mitzvah, because as far as I know, he's not a Jew. So then destiny uh, put in his um, Twitter profile, I guess, he put Jew among the list of his, uh, as a joke. And then uh, JF started referencing this as uh, the proof of destiny being a Jew. Now, what is the point of calling destiny a Jew? Well, this has to do with a kind of um, catcher in the rye aspect of YouTube. Now, you know, catcher in the rye, it's like, this is, um, this is where we search for meaning on YouTube. This is where we search for dad. And this is where we sometimes find bad authority. You know, we just kind of, we're stuck in a certain adolescence. You know, like when YouTube demonetizes, we scream, we scream that our videos have been demonetized as if this corporation is, is uh, our dad, you know. Or, or like Peterson, we start to idealize him. And when a person offers constructive criticism, we call him fat for no reason. I'm not that fat, dude. Do you see a double chin? Well, I've lost some weight since that criticism. It was somewhat productive. Anyway... Uh, so this is what we do on YouTube. We just kind of hang out here, look for our parents. But where there are good dads, there must be bad dads, okay? There must be that strict nun who spanks us and we have to rebel against her. And we have to go to the schoolyard and uh, write, you know, Sister Mary is a cunt or something. And we feel very... Um, um, very kind of... Well, well, you know, this is what I'm going to, like, Jews collectively Jews are our dad but they're the bad dad they're not the good dad they're the bad authority dad and we have to rebel against them and that's the essence of this 4chan YouTube anti-semitism it's it's just that we're gonna um, put in this kind of a caricature of a of a Jew but not so much for extermination maybe for lulls and for being edgy we're very edgy, like, in normal world you can't say these things, you can't put triple parentheses, you have to keep it quiet, but this is our politically incorrect rebellion against authorities. These fucking Jews, they lecture us, they tell us what to do in the media, maybe we don't want to, like, kill them all, but uh, they're, just, uh, they're just kind of, we're going to re rebel against them and be edgy. We are going to differentiate ourselves from the normies by rebelling against the Jews. So that's kind of, it's uh, maybe less menacing than uh, fucking, uh, well, it's definitely less menacing than 1930s anti-Semitism, but that's its essence. So when JF proclaimed destiny to be a Jew, he, it was an interesting kind of YouTube three-dimensional chess move. Because it's like, oh, you think this is kind of, like, even if you're a kind of a wild, whatever, stream user who's like fucking very edgy and not normal and fucking, you know, just kind of open to stuff and fuck to the political correctness. When you hear about um, having sex with a girl who has been proclaimed by the court to have an emotional maturity level of an 11 or 12 year old, it's maybe a little bit weird. But now it's the Jews who are making the accusations, right? We're not going to let ourselves be spanked by the Jews. So that's what GF did. He kind of, he became an anti-authority rebellious figure by basically blaming the Jews and the feminists on everything. Like the feminists are like the nagging mom and the Jews are just this self-righteous authoritarian dad or maybe like a school principal. We're not going to uh, let you uh, spank us, rabbi. We're not going to let you spank us, you know, uh, big Jew. Hey, big Jew, I'm going to bang any, any fucking retard or autist, I'm fine, Jew. You're not going to, you're not going to tell me what to do, Jew. <laughs> I'm fucking JF Grippy. You know, fucking, uh, don't fuck with me. So, uh, how, old, uh, uh, how old was she? She was 19 years old. Okay, so she was an adult. She had, had to leave her parents and to live with me. And she had decided to start a family with me. Uh, she was found in this this proceeding that violates the United States Constitution in her absence to have no rights. And her father violently kidnapped her after and is still detaining her. And it was against her will. She was screaming. And what she was just took. Yeah. Jesus, that's so sad, man. Yeah, it's autism, it's like, it's like how, how bad was the autism? <laughs> Jesus, Anthony. <laughs> I, I, I just think, like, imagine, imagine you're like, no, dad, dad I'm good, What kind of man. fucking question is that? Here's this heartbreaking story. So how retarded was she? No, I'm just saying, because 
you're saying you're saying like that she she was trying to explain to to everyone like I don't want to go right, but yeah. w- but w- what level like do you hit where the, the government's like no sorry you can't you can't do that. Slightly below you, Andy. Slightly below you in the mental idea, in mental capacity, you uh, hit that level. <laughs> but um, you know, Garipi, he's um, a little, um, a little disingenuous here. I mean, or at least very sinister. What does it mean she wanted to start a family? Like she was 19, as Destiny pointed out before. She never lived outside of her house. She was dependent on her parents. She suddenly escaped and and suddenly like turned out with this like 32-year-old neuroscientist, a PhD. And it, he's like, if you're the father of this poor girl, he's like, um, JF is like the perfect villain. He's just this French kind of creep, uh, a French... Um, just a French kind of um, a sinister figure, a French villain who, um, you know, kind of lured your uh, daughter away, used her for his lust, and then wanted to uh, impregnate her so he could stay in America. And it's just like you can't get any more sinister than that, aside from actual, like, serial killer, like Ted Bundy stuff. I mean, it's just a in non-explicitly violent way. This is, this is some sinister shit. And not only did he want to impregnate her, but he explicitly told her that she was pregnant. You know, he told her that. And uh, so when she came back to her parents, or when her parents took her, uh, she was convinced, she was convinced that she's pregnant. Uh, and was like terrified of giving birth to a child. So you sort of, um, you really uh, feel for this girl if you think about it. It really is a fucking, a very, very, very sinister story. When, when the person is in front of the policeman, and the policeman was not involved in her kidnapping, the policeman came weeks before, and he's asking her, are you happy here? And she's like, yeah, I'm super happy. Please leave me alone. We're having a fantastic life. And I, it's okay that you guys care, but I'm okay. I'm doing good, and I'm happy. If she can stay this and without any sort of pressure, why would you take that person away? And that's my point. And, and uh, hey, Jim, that's why I asked that question. Everyone's like, holy fuck, Andy. Jesus Christ. No, the reason is, is because I'm just picturing her not being able to speak to the, the court or the police officer or whoever. You know what I mean? But if she's saying, I'm, I'm happy, you know, I know people with autism and they're like able to speak and stuff. And it's great. I know people with autism and they're able to speak and stuff and it's great. <laughs> I'm, I'm Andy Worski. I wasn't able to spell my name until the age of 16. <laughs> and look at me. I want to dedicate a few, um, a few words to the host with the most, to Andy. Now, why is he successful in this medium? Why is he successful here? Well, I, I really think that um, it is because he's very stupid. Now, this might sound... He's just kind of um, stupid and naive. And this is why it's hilarious that he ended up on this hate list on the Southern Poverty Law Center. And it's just, he's just a doofus. Like, um, if you go back on his channel and look at his earlier videos, like his first videos, he was like um, making, reviewing like stupid comments on Facebook. Like he was just laughing at stupid comments on Facebook. Like that was his channel. And now he's like involved in these discussions with these French perverts and with alt-right guys. And now he's like considered to be a hate figure like Mr. Medica over there he works behind an alias he says all kinds of shit but nobody knows who he is I mean some people do but fucking Andy it's just Andy Worski <laughs> Andy Worski life what explains his success is his stupidity like he's literally retarded and he retards the conversation and this is actually a good good thing because he's surrounded by the worst kinds of celebrities the YouTube shit celebrities and these are the people who just they acquire a certain audience and they're incapable of really gaining any more than that like they've reached critical mass because some people drop in some people drop out and they have um, a nice kind of level of uh, success but nevertheless it goes to their head like this little shitty success goes to their head they're able to make some money off of YouTube back some money on streams and patreon and they have big e- egos and they fucking yap around and they um, have their stupid memes and their 
inside jokes and they're like whatever what's the other stream it's like kumate or whatever like what the fuck does this mean kumate like what the fuck does this mean whereas andy just slows the shit down he kind of puts a break on their egos on their yapping with his retardation and he makes these shows more manageable that's his like secret to success that's how he ends up at the eye of the storm because he's the storm's retarded inner core it's fine so if I was just asking how autistic was she, was she able to even fucking... <laughs> First the Mexican thing and now this, you're really on a roll, man. Yo, yo, listen. She was a very special person and she had a way to communicate with the world that needed lots of attention. You needed to understand her. You needed to understand that she's going to be delayed in the way she interacts. But when you waited for her to speak, and sometimes it could take five more seconds than a normal person. But when you waited, she showed that she had something inside of her that was very high IQ. She had very high intelligence, but it was trapped in a brain that was functioning very differently. Now, this is fucking fascinating. Okay, like this is fucking fascinating what he just said because this is like the best part of the video coming up man you were about to tune in but check this out there is a kafka story and i know uh, the story because i put it in a love letter to this girl i really loved in the 20s that i'm obsessed with and mentioned multiple times on this channel and will in the future i'm no longer in love with her but she just left such a big hole in my existence well anyway I wrote her this letter like referencing this Kafka story and uh, the Kafka story was about um, this man who came uh, to, the, to the gates, there were different levels of gates and uh, they were closed and um, he tried to get in the gates, he wanted to, uh, for the gates to open, you know, but the guard wouldn't open the gates and um, he spent his whole life by these gates. Um, and um, I forget the exact thing, but um, as he was dying in his last days, the gates opened and the guard said, these gates were waiting just for you. It's just like this lost possibility. Like it was, of course, more beautiful in Kafka's story. Let me see. Now, of course, on YouTube today, it's like triple parentheses Kafka. But anyway, just um, a really powerful story. And I guess I, it's like you have an unfulfilled destiny or something, a, a kind of a, the tragedy of life where we have the sense of meaning and it's uh, closed, it's close to us, but we feel that we have a unique connection to it. Just like I felt for that uh, girl with melancholy, borderline eyes in Seattle. Yeah, that's how I felt. She was my Gates, but now I'm kind of indifferent. I'm indifferent to anything, dude. I'm dead inside. Not even a, an autistic girl with a 12-year-old mind can crack crack the code of my heart, I don't think. Well, fuck it anyway. Who cares? Who gives a shit? Well, anyway, his story is kind of like that in a sense that here were her gates and they opened just for him in this case. Or or yeah, something like that. You know, like he was the the autistic whisperer. He was the one who could open that stuff and let out her humanity, right? And then the state and her parents, her close-minded parents, intervened. It's like a powerful, unique, romantic story that he fucking spins, right? It's just like he was the only one who recognized her humanity. But it, you know, but unfortunately, this connection between him and this girl, this poor girl who traveled all the way to meet this fucking fucker. The tragedy is that the key to these gates, you know, um, was penetrated not by kind of empathy or a unique connection, but by a fucking psychopath, you know? It's like nobody else, like no normal guy, for ethical reasons, but also for reasons of being the other, uh, would want to be uh, with this girl. Um, and um, but of course like uh, any human being she wanted affection and love and so the person who connected with her in um in a horrible way was like a psychopath like him who wanted to use her for a variety of things it's unfortunately it's this uh consciousnessness consciousnessless whatever his lack of a conscience <laughs> that uh you know like really kind of created a, a, a connection that nobody else would give to her uh, aside from another piece of shit and it's just a, it's just a fucking profound tragedy it kind of reminds me of certain like ladies who are very lonely 
who are like profoundly overweight, let's say, or like unattractive in other ways. And then there's like some guy who comes over and starts to feed off of that, you know, like exchange his uh, full empathy and connection, his full affection for money. And it's just kind of, it's kind of a similar situation, but in a more refined, sick, kind of perverted way of a, uh, of a French neuroscientist. You guys are laughing at it, and it's, it's a funny situation. It's funny in a dark way, and I don't mind about this. I totally live with it. I will live with it with the rest of, for the rest of my life. But to there on Twitter, every time you take stance on a political position, and you get Jeff Hollandais saying on Twitter, oh, yeah, but he fucked a retard, so he must be wrong about this, or he must be wrong about that. Like, what the f My friends, I wanted to say more, but I have this, um, in my video editor, I have the clips that I chopped up of this stuff, and I had more clips to go, and then my computer fucking froze. But I think it's a message from above, because I'm sure I fucking uh, yapped enough. Uh, it's kind of what, like, one of the challenges of making long videos like I do is sometimes you have, like, some good points that only unravel toward the end. Um, and um, unfortunately a lot of people drop out, but that's life, that's fucking life. Um, what are the stories, what are the morals, the morals of the story? What have we learned? I don't really think we've learned fucking anything. Um, JF, uh, I think, is a creepy piece of shit. Like, there are multiple women who have accused him of a variety of abuse. Like, he himself has said that he has been falsely accused over ten times or something. <laughs> fucking insane, dude. Fucking insane. Um, but yeah, it, it really is... Um, I just think about this girl, you know, kind of sitting in her room, she uh, saw him on the Drunk Peasants uh, podcast and uh, wanted to connect and saw something in him. Um, kind of a, maybe even like what a other girl might see in him, like the accent, the uh, intelligence or something. But uh, just to think of her like after this experience coming back home um, and uh, believing that she's pregnant, being afraid of this having to speak with um, psych you know, police officers, psychologists, her distraught family, and he just kind of moves on and fucking, you know, does streams and uh, collects uh, money and talks about this without any sense of shame whatsoever. Uh, he, it was another sort of a wave of third wave feminism that hit him again, another another conspiracy that by Jews and feminists that has um, hit him in the face, but he perseveres with his MRA fucking whining about suicide rates. If only he was a part of that statistics. Nobody would shed a tear, or at least not me.